What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to give you this beginner tutorial for Cinema 4D using Redshift and Megascans materials. Now, back in 2009, I was actually featured in this magazine, HDRI 3D Magazine, because I worked on this movie for Adam Sandler called Zohan. And during the Blu-ray and DVD menus, there is this scene in there in which I needed to create a CG disco ball because if you ever seen the movie, every time they break out into like a dance scene, Zohan is always talking about like disco disco and so after I finished working on that movie I did this little tutorial in here in which you can see part of the the blu-ray menu right here is where I made the disco ball and it comes down and Adam Sandler starts dancing and so I was just kind of looking through some of the old stuff that I was going through and it's like it'd be kind of cool to do like an updated version on this disco ball it would definitely help out beginners to cinema 4d so without further ado let's jump right into it Okay, so first I'm gonna show you the way that I did it back in 2009 for that magazine tutorial. So I started off with a sphere under segments. I made this 45 and then I made a cube and I made that 12 by 12 by two. And so to get the cube on top of the sphere, I come over to MoGraph, come down to Cloner and then under Mode, I'm gonna click on Object and then I'm gonna bring my sphere under the blank object area here and then drag my cube under cloner. And as you can see, we have our cube unevenly distributed along our sphere. And so to fix that, we go back to cloner, go to our object tag, come down to distribution, click on vertex. And there we go on each one of the vertices on our sphere, we have a cube, which back in 2009 was okay. But if we zoom in here, especially in like the north and the south areas, you can see that we're getting a lot of overlapping here. And if you pull down below to the south area, same thing. So in the middle, it looks fine. And so back in 2009, especially if you're zoomed back a little bit and had it spinning, you couldn't really tell so much, but there's a better way of doing it now. So I'm gonna delete my cloner. I'm gonna leave my sphere inside my scene here. Then I'm gonna go back up to MoGraph. I'm gonna come down to Mo Extrude. And then I'm going to drag my Mo, oh, excuse me, my Mo extrude under my sphere, and under extrusion steps, instead of four, like make this one. And now you can see for each one of my polygons, it's extruded out a little bit, and it looks even, and it looks a lot better. But with a disco ball, each one of the tiles aren't perfectly placed, especially if they've been in the disco for a while. And so what we could do is click on our Mo extrude here on the right hand side. I'm going to go to Effectors. And then I'm gonna go back up to MoGraph and I'm come down and I'm gonna find a random effector. So I go to MoGraph, effector, come down to random. And now you can see that it's kind of making our, our sphere look crazy here. So I'm gonna go to my position, I'm gonna click this off. And then I'm gonna go back to parameters and I wanna go into rotate and I wanna rotate these just a little bit. So if I zoom in here, you can see that it's rotating them but it's all uniform. So there's a way around that, but first let me move these around just by a couple of degrees, just to make them a little bit uneven. And then if I come under effector, under where it says random mode, if you come down to turbulence, now it's gonna make it a little bit more randomized between each one of these um, cubes here. So if I really exaggerate it, you can see that some of them are twisted more than others. So let me just randomize these just a little bit here because they're not going to be exactly perfect on the sphere. And if I even click on um, my scale here, click both uniform and absolute and just change it by just a tad, just to add that little bit more detail in there. There might be too much on the randomization, maybe somewhere around there. So like I have it right now for the HPB two, eight and three which I mean, that looks pretty good. So for texturing, I'm actually just gonna bring in some metal from Megascans. I mean, you could use a preset through Redshift, but Megascans has those metal textures with the scratches and everything on them. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to my render settings, come down, just make sure they set the Redshift because if I'm using Megascans Bridge, it's a one-click solution from Megascans over to Redshift. So I think I already have one selected. Yeah, so I have this silver here. And if I make this a little bit larger, you can see 
that we have all these little scratches and dents in there just to add a little bit of imperfection in there, which is nice for what we want. So if I go over to my export settings, um, we don't need 4K, but I mean, whatever, it is what it is. But you have the option between 4K and 2K. And I think if you have like the Pro Edition, you could do up to 8K, but I have the indie, indie license there. So I'm gonna just click export. Wait for these to transfer over. And this is export to Cinema 4D successful. So now let me see. Oh, I would put it on my random cloner because I had that selected. I should have had my sphere selected, but I could easily just click and drag this down. And then before I do a preview, I actually want to light this and I'm going to light it with the HDR. So I'm going to come over to my lights and I'm going to come over to dumb light. And then let me go to my Adobe Bridge. I have a bunch of these HDRs already downloaded from hdriheaven.com, which has a ton of free HDRs. But I'm just gonna use this one. It says industrial because I like how it has those lights up there. And it should give me some nice reflections. So I'm gonna grab that, drag that over to my path here. And then under enable background, I'm gonna click this off so that I can have an alpha channel in here in case I wanted to render out and put it over a scene. So now let me come over to my Redshift render view. I'm gonna click play and see what we came up with. And there we go, we have, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty decent right there. And if you, know, if you play around with your HDRs, you come up with different lighting situations. Let me go back to bridge. Let me just pick another one by random. Maybe this church interior, just to show you how the reflections will be if you pick a different HDR. So let me replay this again. And there you go. So we have different reflections off the panels and everything. We can even come under, if you click on this little gear over here, um, I'm using Redshift version three, but I believe they added this in version 2.6, but you can have post effects in here now. So we can add like a bloom so if I click on bloom, I lower my threshold a little bit. You can see that we're starting to get a bloom effect reflecting off our materials there. I'm actually gonna go back to my other HDR. So like, actually, let me go and see if I have a better one. Um, I thought I had some cooler ones in here. Let me get 3DO. Yeah, I like this one, this dramatic one. I use this one a lot for different lighting situations. So there we go. Yeah, see, I like that right there. Actually, it's kind of dull at the bottom. Let me go back. Maybe I just use my original one, this industrial light room. Let me try that again. There we go. So I'll just rock with that for right now. And so for my bloom, if you lower the threshold, you'll start to see the bloom effect taking off, especially where it's really reflective on our disco ball here. We can soften it down a little bit. Let's add some streaks in here as well. So I'm gonna lower my, my streak threshold here. I'm gonna lower this down. And wherever it's really reflective, that's where you're mostly gonna see the streaks coming off. And we also have control over like our streak tails, but we don't wanna make it too crazy. You know, it's all up to you and whatever you're doing. And then let's add, maybe let's add like a flare in here as well. So you can see we have a lens flare affecting our scene, make it a little bit softer, raise up the flare chromatic, and let's bring the flare size down, bring the hollow down a little bit. So yeah, there we go. We have a 2019 disco ball. That's basically how I would do it today. But if you guys are interested in seeing the original magazine tutorial I did, let me know because I can upload that to Gumroad. I have to get permission from the magazine manufacturer, but I don't believe it's on sale anymore. I mean, it is 10 years old, so I don't see why they have a problem with that. But I thought this would be fun, especially for beginners, you know, people that are just jumping into After Effects and Cinema 4D motion graphics in general. This is a good thing to jump into learning the MoGraph module and learning how the MoGraph effects work with Cinema 4D. So like I was saying, hopefully this helped you guys out, whether you're a beginner or maybe there's even something in there for you more advanced users. 
leave me a comment below. Let me know if you like this type of stuff. I've done a lot of stuff for these guys back maybe like 10 years ago. I have a few more tutorials in there. So if you want to see like an updated version of what I was doing, let me know down below. And like I said, I could maybe put this up online, maybe through Gumroad. I'll reach out to the publisher. Like I said, I don't think they were selling this anymore, but maybe they'll at least let me put it up on Instagram. So make sure to follow me on Instagram. And until next time, keep creating. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Subscribe. <laughs>